didn't have to use crash or siren sounds after all. Speeding catches up with you. Paid for by NHTSA. 5X480. Dayton B100 V-Belt. One of the many parts Granger carries. It's also the item that helped Rob carry the day. The job was on hold. Deadline fast approaching. But a quick search on Granger.com and Rob found his part. And with same day pickup at his local branch, he and his crew got the job done safely and on time. Get supplies and solutions for every industry with real time product availability. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Baltimore Orioles baseball. The 3 2. Rutschman swings, lines it to center field. Velasquez headed back. This one will bounce off the bottom of the ivy. It'll bring Hayes in from second, and it's back-to-back -back doubles by the Orioles. They come with two outs, and the Orioles get one more here in the eighth inning to make it a 5-1 ball game. Catch all the action right here on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. So, how does show points work? Well, at Jersey Mike's, six regular number 13s plus three giant number 7s equals a free regular number 13. But so? Pepsi and Lay's now earn more points towards free subs. That adds up. Exactly. Download the Jersey Mike's app and earn rewards towards free subs with every sub, Pepsi, and Lay's you purchase. So, how does show points work? Well, at Jersey Mike's, six regular number 13s plus three giant number 7s equals a free regular number 13. So? But Pepsi and Lay's now earn more points towards free subs. That adds up. Exactly. Download the Jersey Mike's app and earn rewards towards free subs with every sub, Pepsi, and Lay's you purchase. Country Mart has been locally owned and operated for over 40 years and is your premier country store serving the best cheese biscuits and country food around. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Both Country Mart locations are top of the line fuel stations serving shell gas including 93 ethanol free high octane gas which is the best for all you boat owners. Country Mart fueling you up with great food in your engines with great gasoline. Go Pirates! Welcome to U.S. Cellular, where new and current customers choose any phone they want for free. Free? Even the one with 5G and lots of storage? Free. And the one with the latest everything? Free. At U.S. Cellular, any phone you see is free, whether you're a new or current customer. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Terms apply. See uscellular.com for details. We all love using Uber Eats, DoorDash, and grocery pickup. It makes life so much easier. Well, now there's cellular delivery, and the team at Cellular Warehouse has perfected the process. They will deliver your new phone right to your door with all your information loaded on the new phone. And the best thing is there is no charge for this awesome service. And you don't have to waste half the day sitting in a cellular store. Call Toby Williams today at 252-799-7051 and let his team of experts make your sailor delivery today. Sailor Warehouse, your local U.S. sailor authorized agent, serving all of Eastern North Carolina. This isn't your regular cola, so this isn't your regular cola ad. No beach parties or family barbecues here, just Nitro Pepsi, the first cola ever infused with nitrogen. So forget everything you thought you knew about soda, because that nitrogen gives us a whole new experience. Think an infusion of smaller bubbles for a cola that's got a lighter, smoother texture. And don't get me started on the pour. You don't pour this like any other cola. We're talking turn the can completely upside down and watch as those bubbles cascade into the glass to create a frothy, luxurious foam topping. Can your cola do that? I didn't think so. Unless you've got your own Nitro Pepsi, in which case, cheers to your great taste. Because you already know that the only thing better than the pour is the unapologetic cola taste. What else is there to say? From the creamy foam to the smooth texture to its unbelievably delicious flavor, this is cola like you've never had it before. Time to bring your taste buds to the next frontier. Nitro Pepsi. Smooth. Creamy. Delicious. When I need jeans, I order online because I know exactly what I want. They have just one moving part. And if there's something wrong, I exchange them. Buying a vehicle, especially pre-owned, is way different. Lots of moving parts. You don't want to get stuck. For a worry-free purchase, visit Phelps Chevrolet. We've been here in town a very long time. You know us. You know we stand behind everything we sell. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Come get you one. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. 
This is Eastern Carolina's longest-running sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grading, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft, Taft & Hagler, Tiebreakers, and Greenville Auto World. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Okay, happy Monday, happy August the 1st, everybody. It is football season. High school football practice kicked off today. East Carolina will kick off coming up on Wednesday. The players report tomorrow. Head coach Mike Houston is live in the studio. First of all, coach, welcome to the Brian Bailey Show. As you said, your first <laughs> appearance live in the studio on the show. On Eastern North Carolina's longest running sports radio show. That means I'm the oldest That's soldier in the barracks. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, the, you're the OG. I am. Yeah, I'm something. I haven't quite figured out <laughs> what it is. Mike Houston's live in the studio. We'll take your questions and comments on our Facebook Live page, and we're back with more after this. Hi, I'm Ken Hagler of Taft, Taft & Hagler. We're proud to be sponsors of The Brian Bailey Show and The Pirate Nation on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. If you've been injured on the job or due to someone else's negligence in an automobile collision, call us at 752-2000 for a free consultation with experienced professionals who care. Go Pirates! This pepperoni was carefully placed by hand by a pizza maker at Papa John's. Just like this one, and that one over there. Ooh, and even these in the crust. Get yourself the new epic pepperoni stuffed crust pizza only at Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, the Papa John's epic stuffed crust one-topping pizza is only $13.99 and is an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. It's Bostick Sug Furniture's Midsummer Stream event. Beautiful furniture at unbelievable low prices. Storewide savings on beautiful looks for your home. Bonus savings of 25% off accessories. Plus six months special financing. We have hundreds of top name brands in stock and ready for immediate delivery. Enjoy sweet dreams on a new mattress with 48 months special financing with no minimum purchase. During the Midsummer Stream event. On now at Bostick Sug Furniture. This isn't your regular cola, so this isn't your regular cola ad. No beach parties or family barbecues here, just Nitro Pepsi, the first cola ever infused with nitrogen. So forget everything you thought you knew about soda, because that nitrogen gives us a whole new experience. Think an infusion of smaller bubbles for a cola that's got a lighter, smoother texture. And don't get me started on the pour. You don't pour this like any other cola. We're talking turn the can completely upside down and watch as those bubbles cascade into the glass to create a frothy, luxurious foam topping. Can your cola do that? I didn't think so. Unless you've got your own Nitro Pepsi. In which case, cheers to your great taste. Because you already know that the only thing better than the pour is the unapologetic cola taste. Ah. What else is there to say? From the creamy foam to the smooth texture to its unbelievably delicious flavor, this is cola like you've never had it before. Time to bring your taste buds to the next frontier. Nitro Pepsi. Smooth. Creamy. Delicious. It's bow time. If you look closely at a big, bold Bo's chicken sandwich, you'll see it's only made one way. The right way. Marinated, then hand-breaded with bold southern seasoning before being topped with not one, but two juicy pickles, creamy mayo, and a toasted bun. Woo-wee! But don't look too close, or you'll just end up eating it. And we wouldn't blame you. Because, well, it is a sandwich after all. A show-stopping southern specialty that can only be the Bo's Chicken Sandwich. It's bow time. This is Marcus Crandall, former ECU Pirate and Grey Cup champion. And you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. 
All right, welcome back. This is the Brian Bailey Show, the season debut. Head coach Mike Houston joins us. We're taking your questions and comments on our Facebook live feed. If you have anything to ask the coach or want to comment on, we'll pass it along to him. Coach, first of all, you're getting set for camp. You got the beard going and everything. You're ready to go. <laughs> well, it's that time of the year. You know, it's uh, the end of summer. You know, that, uh, we had last little getaway down to the coast uh, this weekend. And, um, uh, so Amanda and the boys are getting ready not to have me around, and uh, <laughs> the players are getting ready for what uh, preseason camp uh, entails. Uh, so it's it's an exciting time. Take us through your schedule coming up. Now the players arrive tomorrow. Do they tomorrow. all stay in the same dorm for camp? Or you know, um, I've done that before. Yeah, uh, we did that uh, my first year. Uh, last year we let them stay wherever they are staying for the year. So the guys that have apartments and stuff, we let them stay in their apartments. The freshmen stay in the dorm. Um, and that went really well. Uh, so I told them as long as they can, you know, handle things responsibly and, you know, nobody's late, you know, everybody's at all the meals and everybody's where they're supposed to be, then I got no problem with that. Okay. So really, we say players arrive, but most of the guys are already housed and they, yeah. don't, they don't have to take the big fans and the TVs no. and the games and that kind of thing. No. And, and it, the dorms. It, it, I, th- I think with a team that's um, older, mm-hmm. experienced, most of these guys have been here for three years. Uh, so I don't have a whole lot of heartburn about that. Okay. So then you get the uh, players arrive on Tuesday. What do you do on Tuesday? Uh, any testing? Physical? So um, we can't do anything physical with them on Tuesday. They will do a player led workout. Uh, okay. That they the captains kind of get together and they do a you know just make sure everybody's there and get a little little sweat going and then uh, we have uh, dinner tomorrow evening and then we have some meetings tomorrow night and just kind of you know here's what to expect uh, on Wednesday and then. You know, crack of dawn Wednesday morning, we're up and up and at them. All right, now on Wednesday morning when you get up, what time do you get up? What time do you arrive in the office, and how does that all work? I'll, I'll probably get in the office around six, and then uh, we have a staff meeting at seven. Staff meeting uh, at seven. Kids, we wake them up. Uh, they're probably up six fifteen, six thirty. They've got breakfast, and then we have a team meeting at seven forty five, and they're taped and dressed, and they come to that team meeting. Okay, and then the first uh, first day of practice eight thirty. Is that what you got? Something like that. Eight thirty. Uh, yeah, we'll probably about, probably about no, nah, probably about mm-hmm. nine. Okay. So, yeah. And you go a couple hours? Yep. And you come back, and is it two a days, or is it just... No, so they, did, they did away with that. We don't yeah, do... That's yeah, that's that's, it's changed a lot. It has changed a but, lot. But, uh, you know, we have... They do weights uh, a couple days a week. You know, every other day they do weights in the afternoon, and we have meetings in the afternoon. We're allowed a, uh, a walkthrough. Uh, so we do that at night uh, just to try to avoid the heat as much as possible and hopefully avoid uh, thunderstorms. Um, so, but it, you know, it ends up being a, you know, the kids probably get in here about six thirty, and they're here till probably nine thirty at night. You know, the heat is so tricky because you got to have it. Got to have it. And you got, and you're going to have it on September the third. Correct. So you got to be able to work through it, but you can't kill anybody. I mean, it's just, it's really, it's, it can be dangerous at times if you work early in the morning like you guys do. Usually, you beat some of that heat. Well, you know, we'll get enough around lunchtime, yeah. and then uh, you know, school starts two weeks before kickoff. So, you know, you go to the afternoons there. But you know, with the weather in Eastern North Carolina. I mean, it's why we have to get the indoor facility built. Because if you had the indoor facility, then you could go at different times of the day. You, right. could, you could not worry as much about the lightning and not worry as much about the extreme heat. But you know, until until we get that facility built, uh, you know, we've got to do things the way we do them. What's the latest on the facility? Uh, we're coming along. You know, it's. I think we're on the verge of uh, some some major uh, gifts, uh, naming rights kind of things. Good. Uh, and I think as soon as as soon as those come through, uh, I think you'll you'll see it. Uh you know, ready to go. Okay, and, and you have to, uh, and, and thinking back to what people were saying about, you, know, you almost have to have most of the funds before you can actually break ground, yeah. isn't that right? I would love to see us break ground first of the year. Yeah, that'd be so, great. Get that thing built and get it no up doubt, as fast as we can. Because I was watching, I think Carolina practiced early because of their week zero game, and they were going inside and outside, yeah. and, which is another advantage you can right. do. You know, and, and our plan is to have a, a setup very similar to what they have where, you know, our, our practice fields are right next to the indoor and you can go in and out through those uh, big garage doors. And it really makes for a great practice setup. Uh, then, you know, you get lightning rolling in, you just seamlessly transition into the, you yeah. know, the indoor and you don't, you know, the way it is now, you got to go inside and you sit and you wait and you wait and you wait. And, <laughs> and sometimes you uh, wait a long time. And sometimes you don't get practice in. Right. So and that hurts. And, and where's the site? Is, if it's, it's going to be right there, right, right next to the current turf field. Okay, that's a great, it's a great place yeah. to put it. Yeah. Yep. Man, dreams come true, don't they? Well, uh, one of these days. Uh, one of these days. 
<laughs> hey, if I'd have won that lottery, the first thing I was oh, thinking about was that no facility. Doubt. Our, right. our, our neighborhood went in together on the lottery, <laughs> really? so it was going to be the uh, the Blackwood indoor yeah, facility. Yeah, the Blackwood indoor <laughs> That would have worked, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, someone in Illinois won all that money, but uh, that would have been good. That would have been that would have been okay, but somebody's going to get that thing up there, and, 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 and you, as you said, you got to have it. I mean, you got to keep yes. up with the Joneses. It's not only keeping up with the Joneses, it's more or less a necessity. It's a necessity from a training standpoint, but now it is a huge recruiting factor. I mean, it, you, it will be a part of your recruiting visits. It'll be a part of your recruiting camps. Uh, it's just it's it's a big piece in, for, in recruiting, also. Okay. Now, the first week of camp, how does that go? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, pretty much the same each day. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'll go Saturday morning. Um, I, I like taking Sundays off uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I always want to try to give our our coaches and players an opportunity to to go to church if they wish to, and uh, I think it just it just works with our calendar so you know we'll take sunday off uh from a, a practice standpoint and start back up on monday okay and then you get back on monday you go to a pads what tuesday is that right tuesday is full pads yeah we're, we're in shells friday saturday and monday and then tuesday is full pads okay and does does thing do things change when you get the pads on i mean yeah well, i mean you i mean the, the days that we're in full pads we'll have some live drills uh you know live competitive team situations so it's you know you throughout camp again we, we have an older team so i've got a lot of stuff throughout camp where you're putting them in game situations and you're you got something on the line and you let them go at it yeah. uh, i think that's going to be critical that uh you know we're ready to go you know september 3rd obviously so uh, i, I want to really you know get us in a highly competitive attitude during camp in the media we're allowed to shoot the first 20 or 30 minutes of, of, of practices which is a lot of fun but every once in a while coach will walk by and smile and say stick around we're gonna let you stay about extra 15 minutes <laughs> we got we got a good drill getting ready to start so y'all stick around for that well, i mean and it was and some of those drills those drills are, are awesome yeah i mean yeah you had the drone yep. above it and the uh, oklahoma or something similar to the oklahoma drill well in, inside run yeah uh, you know they 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 outlawed oklahoma right I didn't, that, as soon as i said it i knew they outlawed which is, it but i'll tell you it's, it's dumb that well it's people that don't know what they don't know yeah. <laughs> i mean if they ever went and watched a football practice in this day and age they'd know what things coaches do and what things right. coaches don't do i mean you're you can't you're, afford to get anybody no. hurt you're not going to put anybody no. in a bad situation no. but these are football situations right. that come up on every play but at least they did something so they can say they did something so whatever <laughs> But they are they are yeah, fun but, to watch, man. Oh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's man against man now. It's it's got, all right. We got a short short yardage goal line drill uh, yeah. early there in week two and uh you know, like five shots from the three uh, kind of deal, two point plays, and we got a lot of a lot of com- competitive stuff right wow. there. I tell you, that's a lot of fun. And then, yeah. then, then as you go through camp, obviously you got to keep an eye on everybody with your right. trainers and everything to see if, if the players still have their legs. You got what two scrimmages? Two scrimmages. Yeah, and then you know, and those scrimmages are really more or less for the for the starters some of them you know like like won't see a lot of action in those scrimmages he'll see enough to be on the same page with um and that that's the deal i mean you know what holt nailers can do you know what keaton mitchell can do you know what roger harris can do right yeah you know what ryan jones can do you know so many of those guys you know what they can do so they need work they'll they'll get the work that they need but really you know the linemen need a lot of work uh, so the scrimmages are so important for them, yeah. especially to be ready for the, the the speed and the size that we're going to face in game one. Right, um, and 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 then you know some some other guys need work. So it's just it's just you got to kind of juggle it and manage it, and uh, but you got to make sure that your guys are ready to go. Head coach Mike Houston live in the studio on this uh, season premiere of the Brian Bailey Show. We'll take a commercial break right now. We'll come back and talk about the roster and get you set for Pirate Football September the 3rd, just around the corner. Back with more on the Brian Bailey Show after this. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and this is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports, Highway 11, north of the airport in Greenville. One of basketball's all-time greats has died, 88-year-old Bill Russell, who led the Boston Celtics to 11 NBA championships, peacefully passed away yesterday. The Orioles lost to the Reds 3-2. Brandon Drury, a game-winning home run for Cincinnati, his 20th of the year. The Braves got by the Diamondbacks 1-0. Kelly Jansen the win. Max Freed threw seven shutout innings. 
Austin Riley had the game's only RBI in the ninth inning. The Yankees lost to the Royals 8-6. Salvador Perez, a three-run home run for KC. The Nationals were shut out by the Cardinals 5-0. The baseball trade deadline is tomorrow. The biggest trade made so far over the weekend was... Cincinnati starting pitcher Luis Castillo traded to the Mariners for four minor league prospects. And the Wood Ducks lost to Charleston yesterday, 5-2. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you are buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone who cares your power's out there's a water leak what do you do for these and other utility related emergencies you need service and you want it fast there are two things you can do to get the quickest response if you're a guc customer first you can call the hotline at 1-855-767-2482 and report any utility related emergency that number is also on guc.com or second you can give guc your phone number the hotline process is quickest when their account records have your current phone number service you can count on greenville utility utilities. I'm Donald Stocks, owner of Pip Marketing Science Print. We are your one-stop shop for just about anything printed. If we're not your go-to printer, please give us a call at 355-1636. We have over 80 five-star Google reviews and want you to be our next more than satisfied and well-pleased customer. Check us out at growitpip.com or stop in to see us at 3185 Mosley Drive in Greenville. Pip where business goes to grow. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Avoid the long check-in lines and congestion at the big airports and fly local at PGV. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has more American Airlines flights. Book today at aa.com. PGV, where the pirates fly. This is Coach Donnie Kirkpatrick, Office Coordinator for ECU Football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned, community-powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to the season debut here on The Brian Bailey Show. Great to be back with everybody right here on Pirate Radio. Next week, we'll talk high school football. We'll be on Tuesday instead of Monday because the Big Carolina 3A, 4A Conference is having their media luncheon on Monday. So we'll be with you on Tuesday. And then the next Monday, Mike Oresco, Commissioner of the American Athletic Conference, is set to be with us. So we're Getting off to a great start with Mike Houston live in the studio. When you look at your roster and you think back to when you first got hired, I mean, it's like night and day, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> There's no I, doubt. I remember the thank, look on your face. <laughs> well, it's just. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, there's, there's a reason the the program was struggling so so incredibly in the American Conference. It's right. just the roster was not built to compete in this league. Uh, so that's the big thing we had to do those first uh, couple of years is, you know, get some players in here that belonged in this league and then grow them up. And so, you know, finally, here we go into year four. We have a we have a roster that's deep. We have a roster that has ability. We have a roster that knows how to compete. We have a roster that, uh, you know, knows how to work. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, I'm I like this roster a lot. Do you believe in the adage they they say first you know when you take over you lose big and then you lose small then you win small then you win big. I mean you know this team last year you look at some of those games and and some of them could have gone your way they didn't but some of them could have gone the other way they did. I mean it was it was nip and tuck and maybe this is the year that you just well I think big. I think you, you you've got to have experience yeah uh, you got to have obviously talent. Um, you know, we were trying to win in year one too. I mean, right, it's not like you right. were. You're not trying. Uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, and and in year two, we just you know you played all those freshmen. Yeah, uh, and you knew what was going to happen. Uh, you knew you were going to take some lumps. You knew that you were going to have some some tough times. But you also knew that you know when you got to this year, 
now you've got guys that have been there and done that and i think that is the biggest thing you cannot replace experience and when you look at the experience obviously it starts at quarterback you've got holton back and we had a chance to visit with him when he had his camp a couple of weeks ago uh and some of the players were out there which which to me says a lot about just just the camaraderie which which means a whole lot for this program doesn't yeah. it no the, you know I saw, I saw a thing from uh, mike tomlin the other day you know he's talking to the steelers and and just talking about uh you, you know the culture and just you know everybody's responsible for the culture in the building uh and it's the truth it's you got to have you know great team culture uh which we do and, and the kids uh we talk about it virtually every day that you got to work at it you got to protect it uh so you got to make sure that people are doing the right things that you have the right attitudes that people are all committed to the team you know ab- above and beyond their own you know their own goals so uh yeah i think that's that's the number one thing if you don't have good team culture uh, you really got no shot. Holden's had a great summer. He went to the Manning Passing Academy yep. and uh, worked on some things there. Went to uh, Alabama, I think, for another camp he was working yep, with. And, Mobile. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, he's he's been busy. Yeah, he has. And he's you know he looks as good as I've ever seen him right now. Uh, he's trimmed down, mobility wise. He's moving around really good. His arm to me looks liver than it has. I mean, he's really crisp, sharp, you know, good velocity. Uh, so he's. You know, I, th- I think he's at uh, the highest level he's been sub in. And really, when you think about it, I mean, he's t- taken the weight of the world on his shoulders throughout his career, and, and sometimes that's, that's hurt the team. Sometimes he tries to do too much, but I think he's getting more and more comfortable with the guys around him, and he realizes that, hey, I've got guys that can win games, you, you know, right around me. Well, I was about to say, he finally has guys around him. Right, finally does. I mean, yeah. you have a, a legitimate run game with yeah. Keaton and Rajay. Yeah. Uh, you have a very solid offensive line. Uh, probably the fir- for the first time in his career. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, you know, you have playmakers at tight end. You have playmakers at receiver. Uh, you know, he has the best collection of weapons that he's had. When you look at, at what's behind him, Mason Garcia is very yeah. impressive. I mean, and, and I think it's a great asset for you guys that he's stuck around this long. I mean, it, it's hard in this day and age for kids to buy in and do that. It is. Um, you know, but we had a plan with Mason. Um he he he's been with us on that plan. Um, you know, I do think the the COVID year, having the you know the extra year where he got to play and uh, all that stuff that helped him. Uh, so you know, he's he's going to be ready when Holton uh, passes the torch. Yeah, uh, and he's ready right now. I mean, he's I have zero hesitations you know, with Mason Garcia going in the ball game in any situation. So. Um, you know, we're excited to have him. Glad he's glad he's a pirate. Will you have packages just for him? Well, you know, we're we really there's some things that yes will be just for him, but unlike last year, I really feel like he has a great grasp of the entire playbook now. Right. So you can you can put him in and just, you know, go play. And and sometimes, you know, if Holton gets sacked and he gets the breath knocked out of him, you know, in in the past, he's hey, get up, it's third down. Uh, but that, now that, that first year. <laughs> oh, that was a nightmare at times. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was wobbling like he was in the 10th round. There, I mean, there were a couple of games where it was touching. I mean, it was, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was very difficult. And sometimes it was hard to watch, but you had to yeah. you had to prop him up and tell him to take the next snap. But, well, but now, maybe it's a little better. No, it's we have a good situation now. Yeah. Good situation. And Mason, uh, I've said this a couple of times publicly, but he's majoring in, in special needs children education, yes. that kind of thing. And and he's 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 worked with some of the ones that I know very well. And, and he's just uh, just gold. I mean, he's just a great kid, and he, he's passionate about that major. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do with his life. Now, it's not an easy major. No. being a football player. I know. Yes. I was going to say it's not an easy major. I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're trying to get them to work with us. I mean, because you know, because these kids come in, I want them to chase their dreams right. outside of football too. Right. And you know, you have a guy that's, you know, a, he's an elite athlete, and he has a passion for helping others. Right. I mean, certainly that's that's pretty special. Right. It is very special, and, and he does a great job with it. I mean, yeah. he just he's on. He gets to a level with them, and that that a lot of people can't get to. Right. And he does a great great job with that. Who else is in the quarterback room? So Ryan Stubblefield, a uh, talented young guy uh, from Houston. In Texas, uh, he, he he's continuing to develop. You know, he'll be competing uh, for that backup spot with Mason. Um, Alex Flynn, uh, okay. who has uh, been been in the program for several years, um, you know, a, a solid backup right there, outstanding young man. Uh, and then we have a freshman, Grant Logan, 
who's a, uh, a walk-on uh, from Providence Day High School in Charlotte, uh, and he you know just got just got here a couple of weeks ago, and so but glad to have him in the program also. Yeah, I tell you what, you can't get too many of them, can you? No, no, because you can get thin in a hurry. Yeah, in a hurry, and and it's just it's just nice that you have some experience, and and hopefully Mason will you know get a chance to do some things, and he's been very patient, and as you said, you know Holton Holton's not gonna be here forever. No, I mean, times are running out. This now. is the last the last hurrah. This is the last hurrah. You know, and that I think I think think back to to Holton's career but that's why that bowl game was so disappointing not yeah. getting a chance to play because here's a guy who, who you know waited his whole career to get a chance to play in that bowl game and you've said it publicly I was there I saw it with my own eyes that team was was smoking hot whenever yeah. we were up in D.C. That, that was the best week of practice we had all year <laughs> it was crazy I was walking around I was like all these practices this this good because nobody's yelling at anybody everything's yeah. going great and they were they were really running on, on a high level well they're highly motivated uh, you know they they wanted to play the game and uh, you know I hate we didn't get that opportunity. Yeah, well, I, I think a lot of Pirate fans, you know, were ready to go, and that was well, that's a that's a situation I'll never forget. Them, getting up on that Sunday morning and, and dealing with all that that was yeah. that was really it was heartbreaking but, for the team. Yeah, you know, you know it, it was, uh, but you know what it it all things happen for a reason. Yeah. Uh, that was a special year last year, um, and I, I tell you that I, I enjoyed. Uh, so Amanda and I elected to just kind of stick around and go see Annapolis uh, later that day. And uh, God, I, th- I think half of Greenville was there. <laughs> I think they were. I, I, pr- I promise you there were 10,000 pirates. There were all kinds of stories coming out of so, Annapolis. Uh, that, that was pretty good to see. That, yeah. was, that was pretty incredible. I came back that day, fought all that traffic to get home just to watch the Cowboys play that night. I, I did do <laughs> That's that. good, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, anytime you can see the as, Cowboys play. As a Cowboy fan, it's a good day. You know, that is a good day. All right, we've got some questions and comments on our Facebook Live feed. Some of these things I don't know if you'll know, but I'll go ahead and ask them to you. Uh, Kevin wants to know if you're going to have Meet the Pirates this year. I'm sure you are. I'm not we sure are. the date is. Uh, it is. We'll look that date up for you, yeah, Kevin. I've got it in here somewhere. I'm going to meet the Pirates. Uh, another question is about season ticket sales. And I had John Gilbert on at the uh, Special Olympics pool party last week. And I think he said close to 14.5 is where season tickets are. Do you, uh, do you I know talked that? to Ryan, Ryan Robinson this morning. We're right at 15,000. Right at 15. Okay. I, he, he, maybe he said between 14.5 and 15. So, so meet the Pirates is going to be Saturday, August 20th. Saturday, August 20th. Yep. We have a scrimmage uh, that morning. Uh, the tail end of the scrimmage will be the beginning of meet the Pirates. Okay. And then we'll have that event uh, with the players right after we finish uh, the scrimmage and then we'll do media day media days at 1 30 i believe yeah. I so all that stuff's gonna be together okay yeah that gives the fans a chance to see the see the guys out there practicing and then some some time quality time with the kids afterwards all right scott is riding in from maryland he said how is isaiah foot doing Really good. Okay. Uh, I thought he had a really good spring. Um, He's competing for a starting job going into fall camp. He's had a good summer. Uh, Very pleased with where he's where he's at. All right. Ashley writes in and says there was an announcement. She can't remember which department on campus designing new uniforms. Any updates on new uniforms? The, the, The School of Entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I should have I should have majored there. Yeah. Well, if you know Fielding Miller, who is a, a great pirate, a big supporter of ours, um, you know the Fielding the Miller School of Business, right. Fielding Miller School of Business, um, all that together, uh, you know Fielding put together this thing where he wanted uh, to have a contest within the, the School of Entrepreneurship to design an alternate uniform, and so they did uh, had a contest. We. Picked a winner from the contest. Uh, I think our fans will be uh, very pleased with it and really passionate about uh, the uniform. And so, you know, we'll we'll wear that at some point. Uh, you don't know what, which game yet? Uh, it won't be the opener, right? Uh, but at some point this fall. What are we wearing for the opener? Are we gonna just purple? Probably just purple. Uh, traditional. Traditional. I mean, it's gonna be traditional. I yeah. Yeah. I, would say I, thought, I think it's important. It's you know we're we're the first game. You know, college game day. ESPN that yep. morning, you know we're the game that they cut to right out of, out of the studio. Yeah. So uh, you know it's going to be a, a you know a big national kind of yeah. you know, stage. Well, it's got us, a so. big stage feel to it now. Yeah. I think the players. I think that's the one advantage of having a game like that in the opener when you're in camp. Yeah, and, and that doesn't mean anything about any other teams you play or whatever. But if, but if you have Old Dominion or Campbell, you know it's just. But that state game, I think everybody looks at that and says, okay, it's August first, September third. You know, we got we got a lot of work to do. Right. But that that big game right there. Well, you know they they think they may have the best best team they've had. Right. You know they're they're talking about you know college football 
football playoff, ACC championship, all that stuff. You know, they can't stand us. We don't like them. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the classic matchup. Oh, it is. And it's it's going to be 12 o'clock. I hope it's like 98, <laughs> 90% humidity, not a cloud in the sky. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be hot. That, there's no question about that. I just hope I just hope beyond hope that it's, it's not one of those thunderstorm days where you got yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah you no clouds. Come in. No yeah, clouds. No clouds. Yeah. Carolina blue skies yeah. for an East Carolina NC State matchup. There you go. I'm right there with you. All right, let's take a commercial break right now. Questions and comments on our Facebook live feed. We'll pass them along to coach Mike Houston. Got about a half hour to go in our first show of the year. Back with more on the Brian Bailey show after this. Before you hit the road this travel season, be sure to get your tires inspected by the Tire Guys at Greenville Auto World. The Greenville Auto World service team sells all the top brands and economy tires if you need a new set. Need an oil change, state inspection, or AC repair? Greenville Auto World can work on any type of vehicle, and the monthly oil change special is only $29.99. Make an appointment now by calling 364-8730. For award-winning service, trust Greenville Auto World. the best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger tiebreakers in greenville plus the all-new tiebreakers in winterville do real burgers better than anybody so don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain it's time to break the chain and eat local tiebreakers real burgers at its best everybody loves burgers East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Vaughn. Whether you're putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities. Utilities. Seared Chop House is Greenville's only true chop house. We're open seven days a week. Seared combines a remarkable menu with an unrivaled atmosphere. Lunch or dinner at Seared is a quality driven experience where we highlight a thoughtful approach to locally sourced ingredients and hearty, flavor rich cuisine. We're firing up the grill at Seared, Greenville's only true chop house, located on Fire Tower Road at Bells Fork. Come see us at Seared seven days a week. Tired and sluggish, down in the dumps, or do you just have the blahs? Well, maybe you need to hydrate. Revive Health and Wellness offers IV hydration, which can help you with lack of energy, improve your mood, assist with immunity, and even fix a hangover. Call today to set up an appointment at 350-1805. Locally owned and operated by Samantha Casper, Revive Health and Wellness has a new location and is ready to serve you. Stop by at 2459 Emerald Place in Greenville or go online at revivehealthwellness.org. For the latest from the world of golf, tune in every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 for the Golf Shop Radio Show. Hosts Mark Greenhelge and Matt Blanchard talk golf from tee to green and everything in between. If you like golf, you're going to love Golf Shop Radio. Before you tee up, drop on in. Welcome to the Golf Shop. Hi, this is Brian Meador from East Carolina Athletics. You're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to the show. Chris writes in, since we were just talking about it, he wants to know, since it's going to be so hot for the state game, what are some of the plans to keep the players cool? You got the big fans, I guess? We got the big fans, the the misters, and all that stuff. So uh, The mist machines that that throw it out there. And, uh, and, you know, it's, it's weird when it's that hot in a game situation i mean I, the trainers have to be like like in tune with guys to make sure that they're not getting lightheaded or well yeah and, but i mean understand now these kids have been here all summer right and we train in the heat right. all summer right you're not in the air conditioning running and, no yeah. and and we're going to practice in the heat all august so yeah. it's, our kids will be much more acclimated for it than 
our opponent. Yeah, and that's good. That, yeah. that's, that's the best thing. Yeah. Four home games to start September. You yeah. ever been a part of anything like that? No. <laughs> that's fantastic. I've never seen it either. No, it's great. <clears throat> that is great. Great chance to go off to a great start. Yes. Yeah. No, it, of- no, it's, it's a tough schedule, but uh, but you know having the first four at home, you know, that's great. And you got Navy. I wish Navy's got an open week again this year before us. That's two years in a row. They've had two weeks to get ready for us, which kind of ticks me off. That but, American. Uh, but, you know, you do have them at home, and you yeah. got them fairly early in the season. Yeah, and it, but it's always a different animal. Oh, I, I know you've already started working on oh, we were, we were game plan. We were working on it uh, last Thursday and Friday. Yeah. It's just, it's just so different. But uh, Ken Niamatololo and company, they yeah. just, uh, they do, a, they do a great job over there. Uh, house recruiting going. John says house recruiting going in the Todd or Hampton Roads area. Well, recruiting in general is going really, really well. Good. Um, you know, I've, I've really liked the class that we have committed right now. Um, yeah, I, 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 that area we are treating it as an in-state area because it's so close right it's you know that that area is closer than charlotte is oh by far so yeah. um it's yeah. almost like raleigh right i mean it's two so, hours that's so where i'm from so latrell, yeah. latrell scott has that area of course he's from that area mm-hmm. so he knows all those guys up there so we're you know we're in there knee deep yeah that's a that's a great great area too there have been some great players that come out of yes. the sidewater area so oh, yeah that's a and, and really it is almost in-state you know yeah. two, two two and a half hours to well you know it was most, we recruited it heavily at jmu but it's we're much closer to that area than Jamie. Right, for sure. Yeah, and Virginia Tech and Virginia, we're, East Carolina's closer than all of those yeah. to the top water area. So that is a good area. Let's talk about running backs at the uh, Pirate Camp. And obviously, you start with Keaton Mitchell and Rajay Harris. Uh, these two give you guys just the best one two punch, don't they? Yeah, they do. And it's, you know, they're, they're great teammates, uh, they're great supporters of each other. Uh, they compete with each other. Now, you know, they both want to be the guy, but, you know, they also respect the other. Uh, and the thing is, in, in today's game, you know, we have to have both of them. Uh, just you can't take the, the wear and tear of a 12-game schedule if, if you've only got one guy. Um, so, you know, we're very blessed to have those two kids. And you've got some other guys in that yeah. room, too, that you like. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who the third is. Um, you know, Pop McKay was with us last year. Really excited about Marlon Gunn. Uh, he's had a really good summer, really top end uh, talent. Um, you know, going to be interesting to see how he competes uh, when he put the pads on here in August. Uh, Kamara Edmonds, uh, you know, pr- transfer from North Carolina. Now, I think he's figured out pretty quickly that, uh, hey, you better, you better be ready to go when you step on the field with that bunch. Uh, yeah. Cause it's, well, I would think when he's looking around for a school, if he decided to transfer, he looks over and he's, he's got to know that there's two of them that are really, really good. Well, I've got to step up there. and But he was a great talent. We were talking about during the commercial, yes. especially his junior year. Yeah, a great high school player. We recruited him. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think that sometimes, you know, some of the other, some of the bigger schools, they don't really respect what you have. Um, so, I mean, I, uh, those, those those first two right there are pretty good now. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. All right, the wide receiver room. Uh, let's talk about CJ a little bit because, obviously, he was in the doghouse for a while. He's bounced back. Everything that I've talked to people about say that he's come back with a great attitude. He's in the slot, but you need somebody in the slot, and he's doing a good job. He's had a good summer. Uh, if, he can, if he can stay where he's at mentally, I think he's got a chance to have a really good fall. Um, had a little bit of uh, medical stuff here towards the end of July, but that's that's cleared up, and so should be ready to go uh, on Wednesday. It always seemed with me with CJ that that he would get in these battles with the defensive backs, and it almost seemed like that the game would, would be you know would be here, and his battle was, and that was part of his battle, his yeah, interior battle. And, you know, it's you know people talk. Oh well, we yeah, chatting so, so, all the time. So those those. Those other teams, they know, right? They know that, and he just. Yeah. We've talked a lot about that. Is just you listen. You got to go play your game, right? You keep, Somehow, you some yeah, way, you just got to keep your head down. Be quiet. Don't worry about anybody else and that's just it. play. And it's, but but there's a lot of chatty Cathys out there, aren't there? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, if they can, if if I'm a DB and I know that I can get a under your skin a receiver yeah. off his game just by talking to him, then I'm that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. So, but now I'll tell you the other thing. Isaiah Winstead has been. Uh, a great addition to that room, not only from a ability standpoint, because I think he's got a chance to be really good this year, but from a leadership, maturity. Uh, I mean, he's he, he he knows what he wants to do, and he takes a very businesslike approach. Uh, and you know, he even though he's new, he immediately commands respect just because of the way he goes about doing his business. And you know, things have changed so much. It used to be when you got a transfer, there was always that that 
period that, that you weren't sure you know it's, it's a, a waiting out period but now you're getting these transfers with more experience and, and they're coming in to transfer to play right away right. I, mean, I mean that's that's the whole idea to get somebody with some experience in that wants to do something different and and everybody says he's he's a great talent he is and he doesn't you know doesn't say a whole lot uh he lets his actions speak for him and uh really pleased with him how about the georgia transfer jalen johnson jalen jalen's had a good summer uh, you know jalen's got a you know he struggled with some you know health stuff injury stuff this spring so gotta, gotta stay on the field uh but you know excited about his camp you know he'll, he'll be competing for a starting job and josiah hatfield josiah's had a really good summer right. uh really Really want to see Josiah put it all together. You know, he's had some flashes. Yes, he has. You know, the South Carolina game last year, the Houston game last yes. year. I mean, those those two plays are as good as any play you see all year in the conference uh, now, yeah. but consistency. Yeah. Uh, but he's had a very consistent summer. And the Duke transfer, Jarrett Garner. Jarrett, uh, you know, Jarrett came to us uh, this summer um, and has had a solid summer. Really want to see you know him out there once we start practicing. The tight end room, which uh, you had yeah. one when you got here uh, three years ago, well, but you've got some good ones now. Maybe a half. Yeah, I must say maybe that's giving you too much too much credit for the old old staff that they had a tight end. But there wasn't much of a tight end no. situation going on, was it? No, but I I'll tell you, those two right there that you got on the paper. Yeah, uh, they're as good as anybody in the league. I mean, at Shane Calhoun and Ryan Jones. And Ryan's getting a lot of the attention, and, and rightfully so. He's a gifted athlete. He has done a fantastic job since he got here. Uh, really has matured a lot. Uh, a really good player. But I'll tell you what, Shane, Shane's a good one, too. Yeah. He's a little bit younger, but he's a good one. How about anybody else in that room? You yeah, got, I mean, you, got, you got Aaron Jarman. Yeah. So transfer from Temple. Uh, you know, solid guy. He's different than those two. Uh, more of an inline tight end. Is he more of a blocker? Um, yeah, I mean, he yes. Uh, you know, he and D'Lo were more of the, you know, put your hand on the ground right beside the tackle. And, right. You know, come off the ball. Uh, and D'Angelo uh, McKinney, okay. D'Lo. Uh, but then uh, Tyler Savage, we've moved to that room to, you know, be more of that flex guy, uh, similar to Ryan. So, you know, the collective is you've got a lot of guys. They're just all a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you'll see us in a lot of two tight end sets, even though we might be spread out. We might be bunched up. You know, so give us a lot of flexibility with those guys. Yeah, that's got to be a lot of fun. Have yeah. a couple of tight ends on the field, still yeah. spread out, and you can throw it anywhere. Because well, Ryan's as good a receiver as any of those wide outs. Right, he I is. Mean, yeah, that's no, no question. So, you know, you put him all over the place. All right, the offensive line may be the best offensive line we've had here in a long, long time. The best that's been here since uh, since I've been here. I mean, yeah, that first year, I think we had you know maybe four linemen and and somebody else with a uniform on. <laughs> so. Uh, but uh, you know it's it's good. I feel like we're solid too deep. Uh, I think that there is a lot of competition. Uh, I would not even sit here and tell you this is our starting five because you know I'm just glancing at it right here and I see probably nine guys that I could see starting. They'll figure it out. Yeah, and which and is great. And the thing is, it's not only who the most talented players are in those five position positions, but it's got to be the, the five that mesh together. Yeah, right. You, you always hear the right. thing about, you know, it, it's a nickel. You can't have five pennies. we got to have a nickel. I mean, it's, it's the whole, all the adages that go with that. But it's got to be, you know, a unit because the offensive line can make or break it. One guy misses an assignment and the no whole doubt. play gets blown up. No doubt. And so it's it's not it's not just their ability. Right, not just your um, talent. You, you can go into that right. inside drill and dominate, but if you can't get the play right. But I'm, I'm telling you, the other thing is you have to have competition because if you don't have competition and they don't have to you know compete their tails off to, to play, you know, they're not going to be as good as they could be. Yeah. And so that depth is so important. Like, you know, Avery, Avery needs somebody to really push him at center. And, and Ben Johnson's going to do that. And Ben, you, you never know, Ben may start at guard. You know, because he he's got that ability. Um, you know, Justin Red, another new guy. Uh, I mean, he was you know, the player of the year, the lineman of the year in the conference he came from uh, at Norfolk State. You know, he is going to be probably a starter somewhere, but I couldn't tell you where. Yeah, Coach Shanks got some decisions to yeah. make, doesn't he? Yeah. And that's and, a good and, thing. And and you've got you know Noah Henderson, Bailey Malovic, Nashad Strother. We mentioned Isaiah earlier. We mentioned Avery. Uh, you know, those guys have all played a lot. Uh, well, Isaiah hadn't played a lot, but the rest of them have played a lot. Isaiah's played some. Uh, Parker Moore from yeah. West Virginia came in uh, in the spring. 
so you just have a lot of guys you have a lot of competition you're going to have guys you can you can rotate them some i know we don't rotate offensive linemen much but uh, you can rotate them some uh so you should have uh the ability to you know to, to really be strong that's the pirate offense we'll talk pirate defense coming up let's take another commercial break back with more on the brian bailey show with head coach mike houston after this The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in Uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. This is Dr. Anthony Scalic from Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center. Our practice has been caring for the athletes of ECU and the residents of Eastern North Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care. We also offer on-site physical therapy and MRI services, as well as walk-in urgent care on the weekends from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Call us at 757-BONE or visit us online at orthoeast.com and go Pirates. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant in Bourbon Bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and made-from-scratch pastas. Check out the 16-ounce cowboy steak or the seafood delight pasta. Join us for our legendary brunch on Sundays from 10 to 2. The Rick House can feed your larger crowds with off-site catering and room for 125 in our adjacent banquet hall. The Rick House, American Provisions and Spirits, 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. Pirate fans, the 2022 football season is going to be one for the record books. East Carolina is coming off a seven-win bowl season, and 2022 is shaping up to be even better. The Pirates need you to pack Daddy Ficklin Stadium this fall with a great home slate that includes in-state rival North Carolina State. The American Conference schedule features home games against UCF, Memphis, Houston, and Navy. Season tickets are on sale for as low as $125. Get your tickets today by visiting ecupirates.com. Have you ever seen those exotic aquariums like the guys do in Las Vegas on television? You ever thought about having one of these aquariums in your business? It's more affordable than you think. This is Hal Pruitt with rentafishtank.com. We can make having an aquarium in your business turnkey with no work, cleaning, or hassles for you. Rentafishtank.com creates a relaxing atmosphere and keeps children occupied. Rentafishtank.com already services many dental, pediatric, and doctor offices, plus hospitals and senior living centers. Check us out at rentafishtank.com. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. Unfortunately, many organizations today simply react to IT issues after the damage is done. This is known as the break-fix cycle in the tech service industry. University PC Care's business services division has a better way, a proactive solution called BizCare. What's at your office? Call William at University PC Care today to schedule your free BizCare consultation or learn more at University PC Care. This is Zach Agnos, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show. Again, we're taking your questions and comments on our Facebook live feed, and we just got the longest spam <laughs> that I've ever seen. Some, some guy wants you to buy some cotton <laughs> in California. Or something. I just called him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy some cotton from him. <laughs> I don't know what that's about, but uh, he did say, may God be with you, so he's he's a godly right. man yeah. trying to steal your money. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Pirate Aaron Al's tuning in from Harris Casino in Cherokee, and he wanted to know about Barker's injury, and that's that's not a good good news. Well, he was a Kai Barker. Yeah, he mid-eared, um, real talented uh, young freshman linebacker out of Atlanta, uh, and he unfortunately on spring break he was back home training, and he tore his uh, tore his knee up, and oh, so man. had to have surgery. Uh, it's I mean it's he, he'll red shirt, rehab's coming along great, great kid. Good. Uh, going to be a good player for us in time, but uh, he won't be with us this fall. Good. And, and you have said publicly that as a freshman, to get on the field this year, you're going to have to be pretty special. It'll, it'll be tough. Yeah. Well, that's good. Now, you got there's a couple that will probably get on the field now. Yeah. J, J.D. Lampley has had a great spring and summer. I'm telling you, you, you have a hard time keeping him off the field. 
That'll be fun to watch. All right, let's talk about the uh, defense a little bit. When you when you talk defensive football, Blake Harrell's done such a great job since he's come in, and 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 he's really looking to expand the playbook some, isn't he? Well, he's uh, you know it's third year with him, so the kids know the kids that've been here. You know all those freshmen that played that first year, they know the system inside and out. Uh, so you can move people around, you can you know play guys at different spots, so you can you know do some pretty creative things that uh, you couldn't do year one uh, so I just think it's a combination of the experience and the uh, and just having to be on the same page I right, talk about the defensive line a little bit well we have one yeah <laughs> the first year we played five kids I remember that and that was I mean, tough Alex Turner took every snap in every ball game the entire year <laughs> and he was a good one he was a good one but yeah. he's playing 96 snaps a game he was he was dead by halftime <laughs> yeah. you know so I mean we've got great depth um, you know, we're sitting on the D line. We're three deep at D tackle. We're probably four deep um, of guys that can play. You know, they've played. They're experienced, and that um, means a lot to get yeah. fresh bodies in there. You no know, doubt. First down, second down, bring yeah. a body in if you have to. And yep, no doubt. And then you get in the hybrid, the rush position, Jeremy Lewis. Uh, really expecting some big things Man. from him. Yeah, he's he's got that, that happy, that happy swagger. Birth, happy birthday today. It's his Today, birthday. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, former South Central Falcon. Yeah. I was at South Central this morning yeah. for their first football practice. So, but uh, you know, he and he and Jack Jack Powers transfer from Nevada. Um, you know, those guys uh, you know, give us some flexibility there with that hybrid position. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 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 excited about our D line. When you think about the linebackers, you've got guys that that just, I mean. You know, as as a as a father, you look at some of these guys. You say, you know, you could certainly be my son because you got that that personality and you're a good. Xavier Smith smiles all the time. Miles Berry is off the chart as far as well, no, Miles smiles a lot more than Xavier does. Well, I, every time I see Xavier, he's always smiling. He must uh, he must not give it to you. He must be nah, a media hound. I'll tell you, those two, <laughs> those two have played a lot of snaps. Uh, great kids, really good players. Excited to have them. So, you know, kind of like Holton. Now they were they were here uh, through the whole process, right. and I, I respect that. Yeah, because they've they've they, they've, they've stuck been, it out. When, they've when, been through the bad times, yeah. and now it's time to reap the rewards of the good times. And they're they're some of the ones. Gerard Stringer's another one. Uh, Jaro Wilson uh, that you know helped bring us through. You know to to where we are today. Yeah. I tell you, it, it just it just seems like the linebackers, like the Bruce Bivens of the world, and Bivens right. is gone now. But but he was kind of that same. He's still thing. around. Yeah, well, he's still. Yeah, I, saw, I saw him. I saw him Thursday. Yeah. The, the, the defensive backs. Talk about them a little bit. Well, you know, it's uh, you know J Mac uh, declared for the draft. Right. Uh, so uh, Warren and uh, DJ graduated. So you got some guys that played some snaps last year that uh, aren't here, but uh, love the guys that are here. Malik Fleming started every game for us last year at corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so very experienced guy there. Uh, Tegan Wilk started several games last year. Very productive player. Uh, Sean Dorso has started a lot for us for two years. Uh, very productive. Julius Wood, uh, I think he had a great spring, great summer. Really high upside, so excited about him uh, there at field safety. Jawan Powell, we've moved over to corner. Uh, he'll be competing with Demel for with Demel Hickman for a starting spot there. But you know he also um, you know started most of the year last year at field safety. So a guy has a lot of flexibility. Demel has had a really uh, uh, really good summer, good spring, uh, experienced guy. So you got a lot of guys that have played a lot of ball, and you've got some young ones that uh, Isaiah Brown Murray, a pre Washington is a, a transfer from Buffalo that started there for several years. Uh, Siobhan Ravel, Fletcher Marshall are really talented uh, incoming guys. So I feel really good about our secondary. Uh, you got to stay healthy. But uh, how do you get a transfer from Buffalo? I mean, how does that process work? Well, he's he, he's originally from Charlotte. Okay, so that's um, the first yeah. first big. Thing. So this is closer to home, right? Um, and I think you know he graduated at Buffalo and you know just wanted kind of a a change. Uh, went in the transfer portal. Does he so, contact you? Or the, once, or the football once he, program? Once he, once he went in the portal, I don't know who reached out to who, but we were obviously interested. But right. So we started conversations with him. He and his parents came down, visited, um, and then a few weeks later we had him back for an official visit, and he committed after that. All right, Scott writes in from Maryland. Jamari Young, another player from Maryland. How's he doing? So he is an incoming freshman, uh, just got here, um, inside linebacker, uh, big, good-looking kid, uh, and but man, I haven't seen him do a whole lot just yet. Right. 
a kid like that and the ones that just come in, you know, as camp begins, I mean, how hard is it for them to figure out what's going on? It's got to be, I mean, they got to well, be looking around like, what in the world am I, I've gotten myself into? <laughs> what? I met with this one one family last week, and they said, well, what, you know, what's camp going to be like? I said, it's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your entire life by a long shot. And so, really, you just you want them here in July to get in shape enough to where they can just function. Right. But it's going to be hard. Because if they're not in good enough shape to function, then they're spending their whole time you know, they, they, in the corner. They won't make it through practice. Right. And that, that doesn't do anybody any good. Right. Yeah. So but, uh, Jamar, we got a handful of... Uh, Incoming freshmen, you know, preferred walk-ons that uh, are really talented that you, you you could see playing one day. Yeah. All right, let's go to the specialist. Owen Daffer comes back as your kicker. Yep. And uh, I, I always think kindly about that Navy game. That was just uh, oh, absolutely. incredible, that kick, and just the, the feeling around the program when that ball went through the, the uprights, and that was a well, neat deal. You hadn't beaten Navy in like a decade. I know. It was I mean, there are horror stories about Navy East Carolina. I mean, I still think that that triple option just scored again at Dowdy Ficklin that for that one season. They racked up seventy some points, but but that I'm kicking that. I'm, I'm glad one. I wasn't here for that one. Yeah, I'm glad you okay. you weren't responsible for any of that. No, uh, no but that was a, that was a big kick. Yeah, I mean, Man. and what a I mean, on the road is cold. Oh, I, by and, and, far and, the longest kicking trial. And I know this went through your head, obviously, as you're try, deciding to do it. But you, if you get it blocked, so well, yeah, it could happen. You're headed to overtime, right? So, I mean, my thinking: don't lose the game. Don't screw it up, but don't lose know. the game. So, how much did you think about not trying to field goal? Just just doing something well, different. Well, at, at some point, I think as Coach Tash, he said. Well, I'll tell you this: he said the field goal's probably got just as much of a chance as the hail mary does. So you might as well go ahead and kick it. Yeah. Yeah, and he did. Yeah, and it went through the. Well, I, prom- right. I, I promise you, who who was confident it was going through the whole time, Owen Daffer. Yeah, and and he, he was adamant when he kicked it. I looked at him. And I said, "Ooh, he got all of that." And then I thought, "This got a chance." And I was underneath the goalpost, and That's man, what I was thinking, too. "Yeah, and it's got a chance." And man, it it, it went through the goalpost, and the look on your face when you're well, you know, excited, and you got that win, and, and as you said, hadn't beaten Navy in so long. The, well, I just you know that was a. That's one you won't forget. You won't yeah. forget the ending of the Memphis game. You won't no. forget the ending of that game. Um, and just like the season in general, you kind of broke the curse kind of deal, you know? Mm-hmm. You beat Navy at Navy. Right. You had the winning year. You got the bowl bid. Yep. So now all the bad karma that you know you walked into, it's gone. Right. So you, you, there's a breath of fresh air throughout the whole program. The sky's the limit now. Oh, well, I mean, it's... It is. It is. That's what I, that's it. It's the sky's the limit. Go right for it. And, and shouldn't it be? I, I agree. Well, as you said, when you were first hired, we, we were talking, we did an interview, and we went off camera, I think, and you said, look now, you guys got to be patient with us, and that's going to take us two or three years now. This, this ain't going to turn around overnight. And and everything you said but, like but that. But you all forgot right. that, like... <laughs> Three games in the year one. <laughs> we didn't forget. I always remembered it. I've always remembered it. But yeah, I remember you saying that, and I thought, yeah, yeah he's he's right. He's going to take a while. So, all right, at punter, Luke Larson comes back. Yeah, he's fun to talk to. Yeah, well, he's a grown man. Yeah, thirty years. He's thirty years <laughs> he's, old. He and I are the same age. I mean, he's o- he's older than some of my assistants. <laughs> But he's so funny to talk he to. Is. I mean, he's, no, really he's, a good. Great, he's a great guy. Hey, I tell you, he's he's really in good shape right now. He's tri- trimmed down, been really working on his flexibility. You know, when you get older, you have to do that a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, you do. The nah, stretch zone is calling me every day. So. I'm, I'm I'm excited, but he's worked really really hard, and he's waited on this opportunity. Uh, I think he'll have a great year. Pirates were picked six in the preseason poll, just behind yeah. Memphis and SMU. What'd you think of that? Nah, I don't think very much of it. Yeah, I didn't think so. I had the Pirates third on my bout, and I did get to vote in the preseason media poll. I had Cincinnati to win it, Houston second, and East Carolina third. You think back to last year, though, the Houston game, East Carolina, one of the most bizarre games that we'll ever be a part of because we spent eight hours you know, yeah. waiting to play the daggone thing. That was a long time. <laughs> I remember my bright idea was, hey, I'm going to go down and see if Coach Houston will do a quick interview, and we'll put on social media about what the guys are doing. So we walked down. He looked at me and said, I ain't doing no interview. <laughs> we're down there feeding peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I know. They were running to Walmart to get stuff to eat to feed everybody because that wasn't exactly on the But then the kids that went out and played table. their tails off. They did. It was a, it was a heck shot, of a football shot to game. Win it. Yep. We should have won it over in uh, regulation. Yeah. It, it just We had a shot there on that last drive. Just couldn't put it in. Mm-hmm. But the think, UCF game. Yeah. Same the thing. whole game. Yeah. And really, Cincinnati, it just... It, it, the, that that first drive of the fourth quarter, we had it first and goal from the four. 
we get the penalty, then we get stopped, then we get the field goal blocked. That just that that sequence right there. Yeah. You know, you had a shot because you could have got it to a, a one score game if you scored there, scored a touchdown there. But and there was so much there was so much pressure on the Cincinnati ball club because yeah. if if you could have gotten it close, oh yeah, I mean because they're playing for you know the chance to play in the national so, playoff. I'm glad it's not you know kind of us and UConn down here <laughs> battling out for last. I heard anymore. you say that the other day, but, and I uh, thought, yeah, I've seen that day before. Yeah, but uh, I just you know. I think more of us than that. Yeah, I think a, so a too. Lot more. And I think you know the preseason polls are what they are. It gives yeah. you something to talk about. But, sure. Uh, you know, down the line you get it on the field and you, and you play it. them. All right, we're running out of time. What about this Pirate football team this year? When you take the field against North Carolina State, how exciting is that going to be? It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, we need fifty-one thousand pirates there. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care where you got to sit. Get a ticket. Get in the stands. You know it's going to be hot, so dress accordingly. Yeah, there's going to be plenty of water. Yeah. Concessions will do a good job. John okay. Gilbert has doubled or tripled his staffing. That was one of the questions well, somebody asked me. Is there going to be water yeah, available? There's, they're, 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 they've heard it enough. <laughs> They'll be prepared, okay? <laughs> be ready. Get your tail in the stands. Yeah, it's going to be fun. 12 noon kickoff, East Carolina and North Carolina State. And we're looking forward to camp. I always enjoy camp because it's in the morning. You can come out. You can shoot a little video early. Sometimes we get a chance to get some of those inside drills. And then we come back and get your reaction to how practice was and how practice is going. Talk to some of the players. And it's 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 just a, it's a great time of the year. I mean, it really is. Good. So we certainly appreciate it. So you got Raji up next? Uh, he's sitting up there? Yeah, he's in, he's in here. He's in here with the Pirate Radio Boys, the Pirate Radio Players Lounge. <laughs> he's a part of that. So he'll he's be ready to go. Later on. I promise you. This after. I promise he's ready to go. Give him the football. Yeah, he's smiling right there. All right, that is the Brian Bailey Show. Coach, thanks so much for your time. We certainly appreciate it. We love working with you and uh, looking forward to a great thanks season. A Go Pirates. And Coach Mike Houston on the season debut of the Brian Bailey Show. We'll see you next week right here on Pirate Radio. This has been the Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft Taft and Hagler, Tiebreakers, and Greenville Auto World. Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show, right here on Pirate Radio.